in our last video we showed you how we made um, this 3D printer. If you haven't checked that out, I mean, if you haven't seen that, be sure to check that out. And um, so in this video we're going to show you the modifications we've made and our first few prints. Yep. And we're also going to show you um, how the, the filament, filament sensor works. Because in the last video, if you remember, it wasn't working. No. Let's get started with some of the first prints. We were particularly impressed with this articulated camera arm. Yeah, we were amazed how amazing the thread was and we could screw these together easily. Um, incidentally, um, the material we used to print these was PETG or PETG and um, that's a material that soda bottles are made from. There's even a little tunnel to put your zip tie in to keep your cables neat. If I take this apart, you can see these tiny ridges on both parts. Once assembled, these ridges enable you to um, click it into discrete positions um, to get it pointing exactly how you want it. Really clever model and we were amazed about how it turned out. We fixed the filament sensor, the filament sensor's here. It was our mistake, and um, we basically just plugged it in the wrong way around. Um, but how it works, I find this really interesting, is in there there's a magnet trying to pull two things together, and when the filament enters, it kind of opens that up, and a piece of plastic gets pushed in between the um, filament sensor. It's a brake bean sensor. Check out our project on a brake bean sensor. So I'm going to be that piece of plastic here and change this knot to a one. So plastic is pushed inside the brake room sensor. It's a one, and now it's back to a zero. I'm covering it, I'm uncovering it, I'm covering it, and I'm uncovering it. Come at this end, see what I'm doing. So I'm covering it, there will be a one, uncovering it, zero. So I'll put that all back together again, and we should be good. First practical print. I'm mounting this monitor and it's designed stupid so I'll need some spaces. <laughs> Five minutes on Blender making the simplest 3D model ever. Into the slicer and onto the 3D printer. Okay, we're done. Looks nice, see if it fits. That fits perfectly. First one worked, so three more of the same. One, two, three. Job done. Let me show you a few customizations. Um, so firstly, we've got these um, side boxes. Took ages to print, but they're really useful. Um, here we've, um, what else have we got? We've got the camera, which we showed you earlier. It's mounted here. Um, really useful too for um, kind of looking at your print when you're not in the room. Um, what else? We've got filament guides up here. Um, they are actually quite useful. Um, but we printed this other one here. You can just latch on like that. But it's not got our little slit in. These have got a little slit where you can Get a filament out and put it in where this one's not got it. We've also got over here um, a steel, the steel um, sheet holder. Um, someone designed this and somebody else designed these cool feet for it. We've also got the, um, this, I don't know what you call it. You can see what the filament's doing, whether it's been sucked in or sucked out when it rotates. Um, we've got Octopi running on this, um, you can run it with no computer, just via um, SD card, yeah. Um, or you can plug it into your computer, or you could plug a Pi into it and run Octopi on that Raspberry Pi. Or, which we think is really cool, we've got a Pi Zero 2, um, here. In here, um, connected to the printer, powered, and it runs a printer via these pins here. We thought we had killed this pie, but turns out we hadn't. Um, check out that video, because your pie might not be dead. 
quickly fix it. Let's check that out. Um, I think that is about it. There's probably some more that I'm missing. As well as all these customizations, we have printed a load of other things. For example, this is our first ever print. So if you saw us building the crosser printer that video, you would see me print this off, this whistle. And I think it might have been our second print, is this digger. What I find really cool about this is it moves. And we didn't print all these parts off separately, but printed these parts joined together. So that's really cool. We also designed and made these um, pick boxes. As you can see, they open up. Now, what's really cool about these is with our old printer, we printed the same design off, different colours. You can see those magnets that hold it together. With our new printer, the magnets are still in there, but it stopped a little bit through making the magnet slots so we could put the magnets in and then it printed over the top of the magnets, which is really cool. So the magnets are hidden. It just really neatens up the design, I think. So the, this, this we printed in three parts, the box, the lid, and then the little guitar that would stick in the lid like that. And this is one of my favourite prints is the butterfly comb. Um, I love this print because it's just nifty and cool to have. Um, it does work as a natural comb. Gotta be a bit delicate. We printed this off with um, a patchy filament, these ones here. Um, because that's kind of more sturdy. You see PLA, um, it kind of breaks. Um, all of these were printed off with PLA. There are some other prints we printed off and we'll go into them and these prints in more detail in another video where we show, uh, show you all our prints. On our website there will be an article on this video with um, credits to all of these designs um, we've borrowed. If we have missed a credit to any of these customizations on the printer, um, please let us know because we really want to give credit to the people that have designed these cool um, customizations. That being said, let's close off the video. Um, like, subscribe, and see you next time.